all done for the day. That was a long day. I know one thing. I have put 300% of the steps. I didn't even know my phone counted my steps until it told me I was at 136% of my steps. And I got to 300%. So, it's uh, a lot of steps. Anyway, I wish I had a step to, over to the Meadows today. That's what I wish I had done. I guess, not really. Patrick DePrana I thought would be third, fourth, fifth. And uh, I think Drew Money actually drove the horse really well. You know, I, t I asked him to be a little conservative with both him and Lunch. We'll talk about him in a minute. Um, and he got away sixth and looked for cover, and there just wasn't any to be had. I thought, hung out a bit in the last turn, but then come on again down the lane. Uh, I thought I thought that uh, Patrick DePrano raced very, very well, to be honest. Now, with um, Stay Close, you know, I talk about all the time he's not an easy horse to drive, especially for a first-time driver, right? And... There wasn't much I could do. Uh, Ronnie was going to take Burke's horse in there regardless, and he was the only driver that has ever driven stay close before, which wasn't an overly inspiring trip in that regard also. So we had, had, we had listed Ridge Warren, and Ridge said, said he was sick and called off today. Um, now I put Brady on him. Brady had raced against him a number of times, but again, racing in stay close and driving stay close, not the same thing. And when it came to um, driving him, I wish if he had to get out ahead of, of Drew and follow cover and stayed in, who knows. But he ended up just kind of making his mind up a little late leaving the gate. And that's, I'm not, I'm certainly not blaming him driving the horse. I've done the same thing a million times. Um, but I think if he gets away in front of Drew and stays in, you know, maybe we scab a check or something, I don't know. But as it was, to get away seventh, slow half, Followed, followed cover, and the cover was good. He couldn't follow it. So in that regard, certainly can't blame Brady for that. The horse just didn't follow cover well today and then didn't finish up his mile good. You know, again, uh, coming in off two pretty good performances, I would say a, a pretty lackluster performance, especially for stay close. So not much we can do with that other than pitch it, right? And I would said to Tim, we can price him uh, in for 40 and keep him out of the open at Northfield, theoretically. Now, the non is at 10,000 is an optional 40 at Northfield, but it doesn't fill all the time. And if you just put him in the non winners of 10, optional 40, they're, they're just as apt to put you in the open at Northfield. Now, I will say, I think the open at Northfield is a little softer than the open at, uh, at the Meadows, although he's had scattered results at, at the Meadows in the opener or in the backup class and, and done pretty well there for us and is only 4A onto a half mile track which isn't enough information to really build a resume on. Uh, he finished a decent second in the first over position. So I thought he raced well. If you're going to say, well, you're going to have to race him in the open, either at Northfield or the Meadows, I think I'll just, I think I would rather go for, um, I think I would rather go for Northfield Park at this point. I just feel that maybe the open's a hair softer there. Uh, every week there's some killers, there's some tough ones at the Meadows. And, um, and that's not to say there's not tough ones at Northfield, but just looking at the, the opens, if they're going to force us into an open situation, first off, we can price him in the denominators at 10. If it fills, great. Now he's in the backup class. If it doesn't fill, now you're in the open. And if you're going to have to race in an open one place or another right now, I think I might take Northfield over the meadow. So you're likely to see uh, Friday back Sunday in the open next week for, um, for stay close. That's my prediction. Um, and then no free lunch. He just doesn't look sound, you know, and I don't know whether he, he ended up re-injuring or aggravating himself today. I don't, you know, he's had enough injuries over the past. I don't think there's anything new that would pop up. But the thing about horses with, with injuries that linger, like no free lunch, he had that old uh, line in his foot when he was two coming three, three coming four, something like that. Um, and then he had a little suspensory left front that always kind of plagued him, one right front that bothered him from time to time, and they play off one another. And the only way to race a horse with as much speed and as torque, as much torque as no free lunch, is to make sure he's sound on both, on all four legs for sure, but both front legs, because he can't load. It, those those old suspensories just can't load left or right front. So what I saw today is the same thing you saw, a horse that was not comfortable and not sound. And... Um, uh, Drew thought it was the left front which is the last one he injured uh, coming off the track so without any inf any more information you're not going to be able to tell him tomorrow if you take the bandage off tomorrow and his leg is huge you can almost be sure that he re-aggravated that left front suspensory in which case you're going to have to wait till it comes down to look at the extent of that injury 
if the leg is not filled up and it's just minorly aggravated, okay, you still got to pump the brakes and we got to get him sound. Now, no free lunch has never looked smooth. Not as a two-year-old, not as a three-year-old, not through at the time, at the present, prior or past injuring himself. He's never looked smooth, not a day in his life going fast. So you have to take that with a grain of salt, but you do have to work a bit harder to get him at, and that's, that's certainly not Tim's fault. It's just him loading weight. You have to see he cannot load a pound on either side. So if he's a little off on the right front, you gotta slow down, clean that up, make sure he didn't aggravate the left front a little bit. It's always that constant teeter-totter. And when you get him good, and when you get those legs set up, then he's good. But until he is at that optimal percentage, and it's not going to be 100%, but until he's at that optimal percentage, what you'd like to see is 90, 95% perfect good. You gotta be very careful with him. So if we're lucky, he just may be irritated or re-aggravated something. If we're not lucky, it's looking like it's gonna be a little more time for no free lunch. So I can't answer any of those questions today. I had a number of messages today. You guys, listen, Helen Keller could have saw the horse today and how bad he looked. He was sore today. So well, to what extent? Where did it come from? Where was he loading the weight from to begin with? How do we fix that? And then we'll, we'll have some more definitive answers for you. Uh, I think they give you a pinpoint answer of exactly uh, the issue and, and the extent, I don't think that would be fair to say we could give you that tomorrow. I can give you a, a bird's eye view. I can tell you what is likely going on tomorrow and then we can nail it down after after that. So that's where we're at with lunch. Uh, certainly far from optimal, but um, it's just one of those things. I've seen this time and time again with old classy horses with injuries. Until you have them good, they're bad. And that might sound obvious, but it isn't, right? There's no, you know, those old horses, you can work on their injuries and kind of race them through it if you have to keep them in the right class and hide them. A horse like Lunch, he's just got so much high speed and high torque, and he's still a pretty young horse. So until he is right on both front legs and not loading from somewhere else, then he's always gonna look bad. So that'll be my job, our job moving forward is to assess the issue in the and in, in what's taking place right now look at what our plan is moving forward, try to put our best timeline on it we can, and then execute that as best as we can. So that's where we're at with lunch. Uh, I think overall, uh, the day I figured we have, obviously, minus the injury, and, and I think stay close. I had pegged him maybe for grabbing a check today, but it wasn't that he didn't get the check. It said he looked bad attempting it. So a flat day for him, but once in a while, a, a nice old horse like him is going to throw in a clunker. I think Patrick the Piranha continues to march forward and just be as tough as he always was. That far turn, he just kind of hangs out in a little bit. And first over, it wasn't Drew's fault. He certainly didn't plan to be first over, just nobody wanted to come. So uh, a ho-hum type day. We'll work on lunch, we'll get him cleaned up best we can, figure out what's wrong with him first, get him cleaned up best we can, and then assess him as we as we start back towards the races, uh, whatever that timeline might be. And then with, uh, with Stay Close, I think you're gonna see him race at Northfield Park later next weekend. Um, and then, uh, of course, Patrick the Prado, you're likely to see him right back in next week. So with that, I'll let you guys go. I am done for the day, and I am wiped out for what feels like a month. That was a lot of walking uh, for me. Addy, did you have fun? Yeah. Did you tell everybody what your brother won you? <laughs> Two teddy bears. And did you thank him? Yeah. Yeah. Ava and Ollie had a lot of fun on uh, on the rides. I will and tell I you this. Ava's butt at Whack-A-Mole. You did, too. And I will tell you this, for those of you going to Florida saying you need to buy the Fast Pass, I would maybe do the math on the Fast Pass before you buy it, because it might say that's a 50 minute wait, and you might get on at 25 minutes. How many rides did you go on, Ava and Ollie, today? Total? Five. No, not Six. five. Like How many? Seven or eight. Mm-hmm. I can tell you right now, I'm doing the math quick in my head. It is not worth it. Not worth it to buy the Fast Passes, unless you don't care what you pay her ride, and they were fantastic roller coasters. Amy said, what was that called? Velocicoaster. The Velocal Coaster. Best ride she's ever been on. The Hulk was fan. This was uh, Universal Studios. The Hulk was very good, but for those of you out there saying, you gotta get the Fast Pass, unless you don't care how much you pay to go on a ride, and unless you're gonna commit to going wide open through all the rides you can all day long, just don't see how it's worth yeah, money. That's the fast pass <laughs> unlimited too. Yeah. You get the normal one, you can only go uh, here we go. Yeah. Captain Marvel. Thank you. Thank you, bud. Uh, 
I will talk to you guys soon. Tomorrow, who do we have? We have Walter's Keepsake for certain. We have two in Saturday night. Oh, Miss Rocket Alley drew the outside. You know, I feel terrible, terrible for the Esposito family. They sent that mare down here. She trained down good, qualified good in a couple of good races, and then was flat the other day and then drew the eight, drew the trailer. And man, I uh, feel bad. She's probably going to end up going back to Buffalo, I think, after this week. Um, but Walter's Keepsake, we'll see how that plays out. I'm very intrigued there. Uh, they drew the draw today for Wednesday. I see that we have um, we have uh, No Chance in Hill and No Snap You back yes. in to go Wednesday. Interested in that. We have uh, Unbeatable Kemp in Wednesday afternoon. Now that negates me being able to qualify horses at Northfield Park on Wednesday. So what I might do is get up early on Tuesday. Go with a couple of horses. A couple of babies were acting up on the guys the other day. Not many. And just one's a... a she sits at the bar, had acted up on Amy twice now in a row. Lots of speed. Just got to iron one little wrinkle out. I might go with her on Monday and then see if we can get her squared away. And then Amy can go with her again on Tuesday. I think the reason I'm kind of pushing these qualifiers on Tuesday is certainly that I have, I have no issue with Jason going with the horses. Jason Merriman's done a great job when I've been around to drive the horses. Uh, Steel Cowboy doesn't get around half very good. Um, I want to go with Pull the Shoes. And uh, those horses have stake races coming up, though, that series coming up. And I want to see how close they are to being ready. So I'm probably going to qualify Lover's Play and pull the shoes on Tuesday at, at the Meadows, take them to the back. I'd like to see them go a mile in 2-2, two, 2-3, two, 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 four, somewhere in there, nice and quiet. Uh, and then assess how they are after. Now, I trained them hard in the bike before I left. Jason and Jason have trained them a mile and a half, kind of stiff mile and a half this week, which is a backup, but a good continuing to add to that foundation for next week and wallop is also ready to go so i'm thinking next tuesday i might just hook onto the trailer in the morning early and go and qualify pull the shoes and these two fillies probably need two qualifiers but the proximity they have to this stake race coming up i'd rather just get a slow one out of the way so that we can do what we want in the lead up and even in that first lag maybe be a little conservative with them but we have and and two different things. Lover's Play will be going to Miami Valley. And if she's not ready to go to that non Marge 2 series, I don't care. She just won't. But uh, Pull the Shoes, I believe, is ready to go. This non Marge 2 two uh, or not maiden or non Marge 2 race at uh, the Meadows. Steel Cowboys in the non Marge 2 race. I think he's probably ready to go. And then Wallop, I'm not sure. Uh, he can race the non Marge 10 at... He can race in the class. They just scoop Crantini out of is where he can race. It's exactly where he can race. So with that, a little more of an update for you guys. So we'll talk to you all very soon. Take care and have a great rest of your day.